Minimal APIs are an increasingly common way to create small API projects, including microservices. But how do you handle dependency injection with minimal API? It turns out the answer to that is rather simple. In this video, I will show you how to use dependency injection along with route parameters and more in 10 minutes or less. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's dive right in. And you can get this code using the link in the description if you want to follow along. And what I've done is I've taken a minimal API project and I've really trimmed it down to just the bare necessities. So if we look at the program.cs, there's very little in this. And in fact, all the code is in just one file. So I have here the creation of the app, the user redirect and the run. Those are the three lines that come from the template. Everything else is the custom stuff. I have two different routes here and I have one record and that's it. That's the entire API. We have uh, a Git, which gets a specific user ID. Now this is, of course is faking that because we're passing an ID and then we are returning a record that says, here's the ID, the first name, the last name. Then we have a post, which we say, okay, we want to post this, um, this uh, endpoint, and we want to pass in a person record, and we just return that person record, which again is kind of faking it, but we just want to create something simple. Now I created, I took out the swagger stuff, I took all that out, and instead I created just an HTTP file, which allows us to test this out. So I pass in one call there is the get to just the, the number five. Um, that's going to return back the record ID with an ID of five. And then this one here is going to pass in a record with an ID of zero, which we normally do. And then a first and last name of Mary Smith. So let's run this um, API. And of course it goes to a 404 can't be found because there is no root page here. No problem. But now we can run our, our HTTP file. We can do the get, which says get and the ID is five. First and last name is Tim Corey. And then we do the post here and we see the ID is zero. The first and last name is Mary Smith. So that's working. Now let's start to work with dependency injection because that's where we want to, you know, figure out how to work with dependency injection. We already have stuff being passed into our method. How do you add dependency injection? Well, the simple answer is we just ask for it configuration. So we're going to ask for the I configuration. Whoops. I configuration. I configuration. And we'll just call this config. And this comes from dependency injection. This is built into the defaults for our app builder. So with dependency injection and in play, and I can use configuration, I can get to app settings, which I have this test info object here with ID, first name and last name. So we're passing an ID here. Let's instead of returning Tim Corey, we can say return and let's just do each on its own line here. And we'll say, instead of Tim, we'll say uh, config dot get, get value, I'll type string. And this is test info first name. Notice the colon there allows you to get to the next level deep. Uh, and we were to say, yes, it's going to have a value. I don't, don't want you to yell at me for that. And then we'll do the same thing here for the last name. So that pulls from our app settings now, and we have first name and last name being pulled by just passing in the request for dependency injection. But we're mixing this in with this, which comes from the route. And if we run this, let's wait for it to load. Okay, it's loaded, go back to our call here for our Git. And now we see that we're returning not only the ID number they passed in, but also now first name and last name is Sue Storm instead of Tim Corey, because we pulled that from our app settings. So that's how we can use dependency injection with a minimal API. But what if we're using a post command where we're not passing anything out of the URL, but 
we're pulling this from the body? Well, again, no problem. We can just ask for I configuration. And the system is smart enough to figure out, oh, that comes from dependency injection. I'll pull it from there. And now we can say, let's say int ID equals config.getValue for test info ID. That gets our integer. And we can say var new person equals person with ID of our ID. Because remember, it's a record, so we can't just say person.id equals. We can create a new person, a new uh, instance with the ID overwritten with the ID that's passed in. So now, or I'm sorry, with that came from the configuration. Now I can say new person is returned. If we were to run this, and then we go back to our HTTP file, go to our post, we can see that when we run it, we get the value of 23 for the ID of Mary Smith. Why 23? Because that's the ID we passed in. So it's simulating we're passing in a record and we're still getting the value back to the record. So we know it was passed in properly, but we are updating the ID number to be from the configuration, which is coming in through dependency injection. So we can mix and match these things pretty liberally, pretty easily, and just say, hey, get this. And it figures out, oh, is this the body? Is this the, the uh, query parameter? Or is this from the configuration? It figures out where all this go, and it gets the right one, and it hooks it up for us. So just pass it into your method as a parameter. It will figure it out. Now, when you are pulling out into a separate class, and with, you have a class, and you have each of these being methods, just remember that each of these methods gets dependency injection as opposed to the class getting dependency injection. So just the, the method does, it's a little bit different, but we have the method pulling in from dependency injection as well as from the body, as well as from the route and so on. So that's how you use dependency injection in minimal APIs in .NET uh, six and above. All right, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.